So in this last video on hockey biomechanics, we're gonna go over the recovery phase. Mickey, I'm gonna get you to actually lie on your side, please. We're gonna get on your hip flexors. If you have any access in the area here. Yeah. Now, we may have covered some of this in previous videos, but what you'll see is that if we're observing a player and we see abnormalities in the stride biomechanics, this will actually allow us to go directly to certain structures, check them out, and majority of the time we're gonna find a problem in that area. So, in terms of the actual recovery or swing phase, this is one of the structures, the hip flexors, which are commonly affected. You okay have me access in the area? Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm gonna have you bring both sides back at the same time. Okay. You have locked off the pelvis here. We're going to get on your hip flexors, so we're going to get on the iliopsoas. So basically when we're looking at the recovery or swing phase, bring the leg back. Good. Excellent. You okay there? Yeah. The uh, skater returns to the, uh, basically to a neutral position where the skate is directly underneath the body. Back. This alignment is vital for harnessing power from the glutes during the initial contact phase. You okay there? Yeah. Good, good. So in terms of what the function is of the hip flexors, it elevates the leg, preparing it for the next stride. This is essential for ensuring that the skater clears the ice. Um, people have problems with hip flexors, they start to trip. And they find that uh, it really affects their technique. Good. So, you okay there? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go over just a little bit more here. And obviously, we'll be working on both sides if we're working on a player. Good. So, if we have a problem with hip flexors, it's really going to disrupt the uh, rhythm of skating. You're going to get uh, reduction in speed. There we go. So if we look at the hip flexor, obviously it's very important that we maintain strength and flexibility of the hip flexors because it's uh, basically crucial for the uh, recovery phase. And back, okay, I'm gonna get you to lie on your back, please. Okay, we're gonna move on to your adductors. Inside of the thigh. You okay, can have me working on the area? Yep. Okay. So I'm just gonna, again, technique wise, I'm gonna have an open hand, not a fist, open hand here. Get good surface contact in the area. Take it down. You okay there? Yeah. So the yeah, adductors have a, what I would call a pivotal role in the recovery phase. Uh, in terms of this muscle, it is uh, critical for repositioning the uh, skate beneath the body and preparing for the next stride. You okay there? Yes. Okay. Oh, goodness. Yeah, okay, now. Something change? A vector. <laughs> <laughs> a whole vector, yes. Oh so let's say we have a problem with the adductors here. It will uh, bas basically affect the uh, ability of the player to bring the leg back into the midline. This leads to an inefficient stride, reduces the speed, and substantially increases the uh, risk of injury due to uh, compensation movements. You okay? Mm hmm Okay, I'm gonna bring this here. I'll just bring this down. This isn't too bad, is it? Okay, what I need you to do though is, okay, when I bring this here, let it go. Bring this down here. Bring this down here. What is the difference between what I'm doing right now so and then taking it down like this? It's so different. It, you, it's night and day. Yeah. It's just adding in even just the range of motion. So even, even though I stabilize the opposite hip, I get in there, uh, you can feel it a little bit yeah. in there. But, that, but what it's just like you were explaining before about hamstrings and you can feel different layers of yeah, tissue. As soon as I start getting into here, then I can feel one layer of tissue gliding over another. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we're able to delineate where the restriction is and then be a lot more specific in terms of releasing that structure. Yeah. Now the critical thing is that if you're using some other procedures and you're using the ends of your fingers or just using your thumb on this, it's going to be very uncomfortable for the patient. You have to use a flat hand here if you're going to do this and you will be able to feel the difference between your different fingers of what is actually gliding, what's not, and one area will come up and you'll feel the restriction so much easier. This is really an effective technique. So this marks the fifth video we've done on skating biomechanics for a hockey player. This is really powerful information. Go over the videos, take a look at it. This will help to increase performance, but also prevent future injuries. This is really powerful work.